Hi everyone, welcome to this video. We are going to develop today the exercises 7 to 13 of chapter 21. This is the, the chapter, the theory of consumer choice. Remember, this is the book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, a college student has two options for meals, eating at the dining hall for six per meal or eating a cup of soup for $1.50 per meal. Her weekly food budget is 60. A. Draw the budget constraint showing the trade-off between dining hall meals and cup of soup. Assuming that she spends equal amounts on both goods, draw an indifference curve showing the optimum choice. Label the optimum as point A. So the first uh, suggestion is that we need to summarize all the information that the exercise provide us. So first, we have this one, which is the price of the dining hall, which is equal to six per meal. Then we have the price of coup o soup from here, just soup, 1.5. And here the income, which should be the budget of 60. So the first um, assumption in, in, in order to understand better the situation, we are going to imagine that all consumption is in soup. So this automatically brings that all your income over the price of the soup will bring you the quantity that you can consume of that good. Then. 60 over 1.5, this will bring uh, us 40. So then it means that if you spend all your money in soup, you can achieve 40 soups. Now, imagine that you consume just a dining hall. Then you have the income over the price of the dining hall. Then you have 60 over 6. Then you can eat 10 times at dining hall. Then, in order to represent that uh, the budget constraint, first we need to label the axis. I just labeled quantity of uh, dining hall and the quantity of soup. Maybe I can make uh, upside down. It doesn't matter. You can represent how you you want. Then, here is the maximum point of dining hall. Here is the maximum point of forty. Then. This should be the budget constraint. Remember, this line bring you all the bundles that you spent exactly 60. If you are um, here in this part, over this part, you will have down, then 60. But if you are upside, or above this budget constraint, you will spend more than 60. So this is the part. Then, summarizing the information, we have already this one. Now, this is your income. You know that the, the money that you spend in the dining hall, which is no more than the price times the, the quantity of the dining hall, plus the price of soups, times the quantity of soups, they will bring you your total spending, right? So then, replacing. You know that income is equal to 60. Then you know that the price of the dining hall is 6. The quantity of the uh, of dining hall that you will uh, consume to maximize or the optimum, given this condition that you spend equal amounts on both goods, then you don't know. Then 1.5 is given, then you have this one. Maybe you can think that this is just one equation with two variables. You know that this cannot be solved. However, we know another condition, that the quantity of the dining hall, the, the meals, are exactly equal to the quantity of soups. Send you, then you can replace just Q and you can solve for a Q. Then you can sum these two. This will bring you 7.5. Then 
just for making a little bit order so you have a equal to b b equal to a is exactly the same you have this this term 7.5 multiplying so you can move to the other side dividing so this should be the quantity so this q star is the optimum of the optimal quantities that you can consume given the condition that you spend the equal amounts on both goods then you have already this one plus the q that we have already found then we have this one that we have already uh, drawn and here we have the condition the q of thinning hole is exactly equal to the quantity of the soups so this uh, should be a representation of the indifference score for normal goods and this part should be the A1 this point remember where the slope of the budget constraint is exactly the same as the slope of the indifference curve and this is the optimal for this student then B suppose the price of a soup now rises to two dollars then using your diagram from part A show the consequences of this change in price assume that our student now spends only 30 percent of her income on dining hall meals label the new optimum as point B then this is the initial situation but this one uh, increases 30 percent so naturally you just um, just, just make I'm um, sorry sorry this one it's just like the price this one moves to 2 because it's given for uh, the exercise then we know already that this is the maximum now imagine that uh, the spending on dining hall now spends only 30 percent of her income then you have the income this is the spending and dining hall the quantities and the price then you know this one I put here a label as one because this should be different from the previous situation then this one should be the order quantity we have 60 which is the income times the 30 percent remember is going to be the spending in a dining hall then you have 18 the price is already given which is 6 then this is multiplying is go to the other side dividing then the optimal quantity for dining hall should be 3 then we know already that this is 60 because we already have we have already 6 we have already 3 because we, al we already uh, found the price the new price is this one 1 so they should be this one 2 with that information we can automatically find the quantity of soups in the second situation with a higher price of consumer of uh, the soup and with um, this uh, fixed uh, spending in dining hall then we have 6 times 3 18 then this is 18 is positive go it goes to the other side is negative then we have uh, 60 of minus 18 so we have 32 we just move this one to this and this to this it doesn't change anything just for making the the variable in the left side for order then we make these two which is multiplying it goes to the other side dividing then we found that the quantity for uh, the situation the other situation uh, is 16 and in order to prove that this result this makes sense I propose that we can make this equation and we can replace all and the results should be 60 because it's the, this is the budget so then we have 6 times 3 then we have 2 times 16 then we end with the income of 60 so that should be okay then we are going to represent that in our graph here is the situation that we already found then 
we have the first situation, which is this one. We already knew that this was the optimal and the first part, and then this is the movement of the budget constraint. Why? Because the price of the dealing hole it doesn't change. So then, if you consume or you devote devote all your budget to consumption for dealing hole, you will finish with the same quantity. Otherwise, as the situation of the soup, because the soup increased the price from 1.5 to 2, so then now you need to divide all your income 60, not, not over 1.5, but over 2. Then you can just consume 30 soups instead of 40 due to the increase of the price. Then this is the second situation where the quantity of, of soups is equal to 16 and the quantity of dining hole is equal to 3. Then, what happened to the quantity of coup, uh, cups of soup consumed as a result of this price change? What does the result say about the income and substitution effects? Explain. So then, this is the situation that we found previously. Then, we know that the first situation it was eight and the other one was three for a dining hall. So it was a decrease for the dining hall, right? For uh, the soups, we had first uh, eight and then 16. So then it was an increase. So at the end of the day, you can say that for dining hall, the total effect is negative. However, for the situation of the soups, the uh, effect the total effect is positive because you increase the consumption. So this was the first uh, difference curve and this should be the second one, right? Then I'm going to split that effect for each good. First, I want to talk about the soups effect. So then due to the increase of the price, naturally it was an income effect, a negative part but it was a substitute effect which was positive so at the end of the day we can infer that the soup was a total effect positive so then this one was higher than the income effect so for this reason the total effect is positive what about the dining hall effect due to the increase of the price of the other good the income effect is positive because uh, because you, you need to you need to consume more in this other good and the substitution effect is negative so then the total effect is less than zero at the end of the day the substitution effect is higher than the income effect so for this reason you consume more uh, you consume more in the other part right so then that's the situation D use points A and B to draw a demand curve for soup. What is this type of good, of good called? Then this was what we found previously, right? Then this is the situation of the demand curve. Remember, in order to draw a demand curve, you need a y-axis, which is the price, and the x-axis, which is the, uh, the quantities. And then for the first situation, for the price of 1.5, you have eight quantities consumed, eight soups. Then for the second for the second price, which is two, you will have sixteen of consumption. So you just join these two points, and this is your demand curve, which is positive uh, slope. This is slope positive, which is a strange uh, for a demand. So this is what we called in economy given good so this is a given good where the price increases the consumption increases as well so next point consider your decision about how many hours to work draw your budget constraint assuming that you pay no taxes on your income on the same diagram draw another budget constraint assuming that you pay 15 percent tax so then, this is your consumption and this is your hours of leisure. 
why we we make this uh, representation because it's how we make throughout the chapter so then this is your budget constraint so you have two options so you can uh, consume or you can uh, have more hours of leisure and obviously this is related with your wage and with your income because for example if your income is so high and you need you don't need to work so much so maybe your consumption this budget constraint should be higher than this one then this is the situation when there is an increase or of tax so your hours of leisure it doesn't change however your consumption will be lower due to this increase so this should be the situation now show how the tax might lead to more hours of work fewer hours or the same number of hours explain so here it was the initial situation so imagine the, that your allocation should be this optimal and then this is the situation when the taxes increases or the taxes go to 15 then you will have less hour of leisure it means automatically that you have more hours of work and why it happened we will go then uh, to see that then the other situation is this one when you have more time or leisure time so then um, you work less hours this is remember the income effect in that case is negative but the substitution effect is positive because you replace consumption for uh, in this situation the, the, the situation that should be compensated between these two then in this situation the income effect is negative and the substitution effect is positive right then you will have this when the income effect is higher than the substitution effect so for this situation you have a decrease of leisure time or more hours of work in the other situation is the is the opposite the income effect is lower than the substitution effect so for this reason the total effect is higher than zero and the same numbers this should be the case where the income effect is exactly equal to the substitution effect so then the total effect is equal to zero nine Sarah is awake for 100 hours per week using one diagram show Sarah's budget constraints if she earns six per hour eight per hour and ten per hour now draw in different curves such that Sarah's labor supply curve is upward sloping when the wage is between six and eight per hour and backward sloping when the wage is between eight and ten per hour so first those are the three uh, ranges of wages six eight ten then you have this um, this representation where in the y-axis I put consumption in the other part the hours of leisure then and uh, the maximum consumption if you work all this one hour 100 hours then you will have 600 the other one should be this should be the situation when this one these are uh, those are the hours of leisure and the other one should be 800 which should be eight times one uh, 100 hours then the other one should be 1000 so naturally when your wage increases your budget constraint gets cheaper but you can achieve more consumption then the other part says we already have this situation then this is the the situation where first you have these hours of leisure in the second situation you work more and then you have the situation and then this th this third that you work even more and then you have this one so then naturally the situation that you prefer to work more due to the increase of the price then if you can make the labor supply should be between 
the price of the salary, which should be the wage, and then L that are the hour supply. So for the first situation, you have six uh, for the wages of, uh, of six, you offer or you supply this quantity. For the eight is higher than six, and for ten higher than eight. So then, this uh, the situation where is up upward sloping. Then the other situation is when we have this one, but on the other side, instead of working more, you start to work less. Then you have more leisure time. So then for the price of six, you have this this hour supply. Then for eight less than eight, that eight less than six, and for ten less than eight. Then this is the other situation. And the last one is like you exactly. Uh, I'm sorry. This one, the the other question says. Draw the indifference curve for someone deciding how to allocate time between work and leisure. Suppose the wage increases. Is it possible that the person's consumption would fall? Is it plausible? Discuss. So the hint is, think about income and substitution effect. So here is the situation where the wage increases. So naturally, you have like more, your budget constraint move in this in the y-axis and it gets cheaper. And then this is the situation where you um, consumption fall. And why? Then uh, this could be the case that person consume less if this person uh, naturally work less, right? And this person had more time. Then the for the income effect is positive because this person is richer, but for the substitution effect, this person prefers more leisure. So then, at the end of the day, in terms of consumption, the substitution effect is higher in absolute value than the income effect, so then the total effect for consumption is negative, is less than zero. Then, consider a couple's decision about how many children to have. Assume that over a lifetime of a couple has 200,000 hours of time to either work or raise children. The wage is $10 per hour. Raising a child takes 20,000 hours of time. Draw the budget constraint showing the trade-off between lifetime consumption and the number of children. Ignore, ignore the fact that children come only in whole numbers. Show in different curves an uh, optimum choice. So then, the wage is equal to 10 and imagine that you devote all time in work. So then all consumption uh, at, uh, at that time should be equal to the hours times the wage. Then you have as hours available, you have 200,000 and the wage is equal to 10. So naturally you can uh, consume 2 million, right? So then imagine that you have all in children uh, this one this should be consumption in million should be two millions if you make all uh, all you devote working and the other situation in, in children so you have two hundred uh, two hundred uh, thousand which is the the hours available over the time that are demanded by children twenty thousand then you will have twenty then this should be the other part. So then it should be the maximum number of children if you devote all time for children. And this one, all time for working. Then, suppose the wage increases to 12 per hour. Show how the budget constraint shifts. Using income and substitution effects, discuss the impact of the change on the number of children and lifetime consumption. So here is the change from 10 to, to 12. And here is the, um, the situation. So here now, instead of 10, you have 12. So naturally, you have, have more, more uh, consumption. So for 2 to 2.4, 2 then, then this should be the budget constraint. It increases naturally. Then the situation should be the next. 
this one was the first and this one uh, is the other one is the other indifference curve then here is the situation when you increase the raising more children then this is the first situation so obviously you have an income effect because due to higher salary couple are richer so consume more so income effects is higher than zero and this is the substitution effect due to higher salary couple can raise easier children so for this reason substitution effect the situation interpreting that way should be higher than zero so total effect um, total effect is, is, is positive or you can think that the substitution effect is lower than zero but at the end of the day the income effect is higher than substitution effect so at the end of the day total effect is higher than zero or the other situation is that you raise few children due to higher salary couple are richer you consume more and due to higher salary they prefer use time for work instead of raising children but this uh, this situation is substitution effect is higher than is lower than zero and the substitution effect is higher than the income effect so for this situation the total effect is negative so we observe that as societies get richer and wages wages rise people typically have fewer children is this fact consistent with this model explained yes this is the situation where what that we explained before the substitution effect is negative and this in absolute value is higher than the income effect so for this situation the total effect is negative 12 economist George Stigler once wrote that according to consumer theory if consumers don't buy less of a commodity when their income incomes rise they will surely buy less when the price of commodity rises explain this statement uses the concepts of income and substitution effect so here we have the two commodity uh, the commodity the situation imagine that the income increases so for this situation the naturally the consumption of both will increase so the income effect is higher than zero and the substitution effect in this case is equal to zero so then the total effect is positive the other situation is when the uh, the price of one commodity rises just commodity two in that way sorry this is not price of i'm uh, sorry price of commodity one rises so this is the situation of the budget constraint so as you can see here the income effect is negative and the substitution effect is negative as well so in that situation we can see how uh consume uh, will surely buy less when the price of commodity rises so this is the situation of that explanation the 13 five consumers have the following marginal utility of apples and pears so here we have uh, the quantities the marginal utility remember what is the meaning of marginal utility is the consumption provided or the sorry the utility the utility uh, provided when you consume one additional good so for example in this situation you have uh, the marginal utility at certain point for apples and pears you have for these five people and this is the situation naturally the higher utility for pears should be for Luke and Claire and the higher marginal utility of apple should be for Claire and uh, Phil and Halley then the price of an apple is one and the price of a pear is two which if any of these consumers are optimizing over their choice of fruit for those who are not how should they change their spending so remember so here we have the price of apple the price of pearl so we have one and two so the maximization condition is that the relation uh the relationship between prices which is pa over p p it should be equal to the relationship um, and the marginal utilities so then if that condition stays you can conclude that those people they are maximizing their consumption so here we have clear 1 over 2 and then 6 over 12 naturally this is exactly the same so I would say that they are maximizing clear is okay fill is 1 over 2 equals 6 2 over 6 then 1 over 2 is different to 1 
what should be done to maximize then he can consume more apples this one can consume more apples so naturally because of the uh, the low diminishing uh, utility then this marginal utility should decrease so for this reason the this one should be um, the idea should be three then Phil can maximize what about Holly he has one over two equals six over three then different to two so then Holly I recommend that he can consume fewer apples so then he consume fewer apples uh, in that situation until the maximum the maximum should be 12 and actually I would say more per sorry this should be not apple should be per so th this should increase until 12 then Alex 1 over 2 is equal to 3 over 6 that's right so he's maximizing and look he has this situation so it's not the same so he can consume more pearls until the uh, until the the max the marginal charity is equal to six okay so that was all for that video i hope you have enjoyed and you have understood and see you the next time bye bye